Good morning. Shannon, take the text messages. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I'm new to the room. Hi, Aricia. Is that how you say it? Elsie. Elsie, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Great. Good. Welcome to the room. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Sharon. Good morning, Miss Manitra. Shannon, check your text message. Good morning. Message. Yeah, I'm working on it now. Good morning, Diamond. Good morning, uh, Fiona. Good morning, Andre. Good morning. Good morning, Tania. Good morning, Julia. Tania, did you get my email? Timmy, in the in the um, Tania, in the messages, text me if you got my email. Yes, I did. Okay, good deal. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to get started here in a few minutes. Um, we're going to be talking about having branding conversations, owning our branding, and we're going to have a guest this morning. If you guys could um, get prepared to um, script and role play your elevator speech, if you don't have one, it's okay. We're going to help you with that today. Um, also, kind of understanding some branding things that we need to communicate. Um, with our branding. And if anyone has any questions today before we get started, it's a perfect time to ask the questions. Andre. Is Andre on this morning? My voice is a little raspy, y'all. I've been talking all day and all night seems like so please um forgive me miss benitra can y'all hear me this morning i can hear you oh, yes mm -hmm. andre we can't hear you i see you text um talking in the chat but no we can't hear you you look muted still <clears throat> say y'all not this quiet in the morning y'all quiet because we got a guest good morning good morning man i say you walking can you guys hear morning. me no i couldn't hear you no i hear you Benitra. okay because it was saying poor connection on 99. Um, oh okay. oh you in the car at 824 Sister's working today. Stop playing. Yes. <laughs> and I heard you too, Andre. Um, I you, had a good, uh, you had a good um, Easter uh, event, Benicia and Andre. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you I you hear me? Oh, sorry, Andre. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, you can't hear me. Yeah, one, two, you. three. Come in. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Bernice. No, you go ahead and go. Uh, no, it 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 um exceeded my expectation. It really was a good turnout, and everybody was like, "Why you didn't?" I had like a, quite a few business owners reach out to me. It was like, "Oh, we could have sponsored this, or we could have did this," you know. Like, so I feel like I should have put it out there more or ask for more help but yeah well i'm glad that you had a great event um as you can tell a little planning goes a long way um and electing people into your business is always better to be over prepared than under prepared so because yeah. <clears throat> we never know when people come in but today's going to be a good day for you because we're going to be talking about how to communicate that branding message when we communicate our branding message, we get people who are uh, saying things to you like the, the people who came up to you. Man, I would love to be a part of this because when we're asking our partners to be part of our brand, we have to show value. We have to tell them what it is that they're going to be receiving because everyone 
in business is looking for referrals, deals, appointments, and a return. So we're gonna kind of go over that today, but I'm super proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Andre, how did we how did we do? Uh, it was amazing. Big shout out to Diamond. I let Diamond take this one, Diamond, because it was all her. It was her planning, her strategy. She did everything. I just I just showed up. <laughs> Diamond is a solid um Diamond is a solid firecracker. She be having a whole bunch of stuff going and organizing and she just stands in the background. It's your time to shine, Diamond. <laughs> well, thank you very much. No, it was awesome. And um I had told Andre, you know, that me volunteering with the city the last two times, the first one was the tour to Houston. The second time was for the family fun day event at Sylvester Turner Park. Just those two events helped me prepare for this because my mom, she was there with me. She volunteered the second time with me. So we both kind of had taken some of the things we learned at those events and implemented them here in the Easter egg hunt. And it made everything work so smoothly and it was awesome. So I'm super excited about the next thing we do. I can't wait. We have even bigger and better ideas now that we know, okay, this was our very first one. We got it out the way. We know what to expect. We know what to prepare for. We want, we know what to add for the next time and just keep building on that. So yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Andre, for letting me do it. <laughs> so I'm glad that you kind of brought that up, Diamond. So can you tell us uh, what was your, ex how did the event, meet your expectations where were your gaps like so for the agents who are thinking you know what the next season uh i might listen to coach and actually line out my advertising you know my uh, schedule of all the events i'm going to have so that i can have enough vendors enough material but more importantly did i get what i was looking for when i first did this event i was planning on having this I was looking to get this and here's my gap and what I need to do better. Can you kind of walk us through that process? Yeah, absolutely. So to be honest, like I, I struggle with visualizing things. I have a checklist of things that I want to happen, if that makes sense. So it was hard for me to see what it would look like in my mind's eye, but I knew I, what I wanted it to be. And I know I want, I knew what I wanted, um, to be there. So it was a matter of writing those things out. Okay, this is what we want to have. This is what we want to have. What's going to work together to make it a nice, fun event where people aren't just standing around bored. You know, it's always something for the kids to do. Um, having all of those things lined up. And then I was able to get all of those things plus more than I wasn't even expecting because I met a young lady at the Family Fun Day event who is a clown. She does the face painting. She does the, the balloon twisting. She brings the bouncy house. She brings the giant connect four. She brings all of the machines. She brings the table. Of the I mean, she literally had everything plus more that I was wanting to have there. Um, so just for me being able to mark off that checklist that I had started a few months ago. And then with the help of my mom, I, you know, like I said, I had the checklist and I had the bigger picture in mind but she was the one who was help, um, able to help me get the little details that I wasn't thinking about, like grab a big bottle of hand sanitizer, grab some paper towels, grab some baby wipes. Do we have the trash bins? Do we have, you know, like small stuff that helped me, you know, having somebody else because two brains are always better than one. <laughs> so I wouldn't forget those specific things. And then for the next year, um, I do want to then start to implement getting business owners in whatever neighborhood we're in to get them involved with the process um, to really make it, you know, a real community event. But, you know, th th that's one of the takeaways I take away from this time is to, okay, now we can go out into the community and ask the business owners, hey, would you like to join us in our next Easter egg hunt, for example? You know, it was super successful. We had a lot of people come out. So we'll be able to show something that we did to make it valuable to them to want to come join us as well, if that makes sense. I'm sorry, I was talking, sorry. Very good, thank you, Diamond. I was talking with the mute off, I'm sorry. So Andre, can you kind of enlighten us on, on business side? What were you expecting from this event? Were you just expecting to communicate your brand? Were you expecting to get a certain amount of referrals from your brand? 
or just uh, or just making sure your name was out there? What was you exactly expecting as the end result? So, so my expectation was to continue to push the brand. I wanted people to see the brand in the light of giving. Hey, we're giving back to the community, and we're not expecting anything back from it. Come out, enjoy yourself, have fun, and and we actually fed several homeless people too, right? Uh, so, yeah, yep, sure so, did. <laughs> so it was mainly about giving, letting people see the brand in the community, giving back instead of for sale, breaking ground, dirt everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So, and what was also and, cool is because we were right there where Andre's been building, they got to finally see the person who's building right there. Like a lot of people's like, oh, you guys are the ones who are putting this up. Oh, this is the guy. And so, you know, and then being able to explain like, yeah, and Andre, he grew up right around here. You know, he's part of this community. Like it made it more, you know, hands on. And they were able to actually get, to, you know, get walk up and talk to us. And we met a young guy who just graduated from HVAC that lived over there in the apartments. Um, and was able to connect with him. So yeah, it, that was that part was really awesome. Was being able to let the community right there that we're actually impacting, see our faces, and get to know us because we are going to be building on that very lot where we had the Easter egg hunt as well. Okay, great. So you guys really planned this thing out, and more importantly, today we're talking about branding, right? So, our how do we communicate our brand in a fruitful way? And what Andre and Benitra had to meet two different angles, right? And maybe they had both the same angle in certain perspectives. Andre wanted to make sure that people knew what he was. And because he has done so much work in this community already, he wanted to give back to the community that gave to him. Uh, Benitra was looking to expand her brand. And this is one of the first events that she actually done where she was um, really getting her name out there. She had a great return. So now people know who Boom and B is. So even though um, both of them were coming and looking for something different, they both were giving back and being part of the community and wanting to be a household name. So that's what branding allows you to do. And we have to do that with certain, with uh, um, our conversations. We have to do that with our colors, with our logos, with our uh, lo our tags, our business tags. So kind of explain to me today where you are in your branding so that we can have some conversations so that you can look, uh, kind of understand what it looks like in the community, what it sounds like in a conversation, and the channels we're going to use to communicate these things in. So ho who's working on their branding right now? I am. I'm actually now trying to get um, my logo made, um, trying to uh, create content to be able to post on social media. Um, basically, I'm starting from scratch. That, OK, so this is the great place to be. Right. You're starting from scratch. Um, you want to one. I'm, I'm sure you want to know what the most important things it is and what the end. We always start with the end result. Right. So. When someone thinks of you, what do you want them to think of? You're, you're helping. Thank you for speaking up because you're going to help everyone on the line who doesn't quite know where to start and don't have the um, strength to ask the question. So where do you what do you want to what's your overall communication? What do you want people to know about you overall? I mean, that I'm a realtor. Um that I like to uh, help, mm -hmm. uh, that I want to get into investments, um, just overall to do real estate, period. Okay. So when we start with that, and um, it's hard to target it down, right? Uh, our guest is going to log on shortly, and she can probably give you a little bit better uh, professional direction. But as far as a real estate agent, I need to target an exact audience, right? We talked about that in class on Thursday. Who do I want to communicate this to? Uh, what skill, right? So if you want to work in the investment world, what skill do I want to communicate with them, with the world or this area, a particular neighborhood that I'm able to do, that they can connect my brain to that thing, their brain to that thing. Let me ask you a question. When I when I give you the tennis shoe that first comes to mind, which one is it? Uh, 
Nike. Right. Now, why does Nike come to your mind first? Their slogan, just do it. Very good. So it wasn't the check, right? Nope. It was the slogan tied to the check. So if you saw the word Nike just wrote out, you're going to immediately begin in your brain to process it out. When they put the check behind it, you it, it reverts you back to the shoe. But when they put just do it, it refers you back to the brain. There are millions and trillions of people walking around the world right now going, just do it every time they see that Nike sign. So that's what your brand in real estate has to communicate to the world. So when I say, what exactly do you want them to know or see, it has to be already turtled down to a very small thing. Because Nike is known to you as the tennis shoe of choice, but it's known to basketball in the basketball world as the tennis shoe of choice. Puma is known as the soccer tennis shoe of choice. Adidas is known as the track tennis shoe of choice. So they all pick the lane, if you notice that. They're all tennis shoes, they're very popular. But if I play soccer, I know Puma. If I play basketball, I know Nike. If my team ain't sponsored by Nike, I don't wanna play for them. I feel like I'm getting cheated. But there are some colleges, most colleges are sponsored by Adidas. So same thing in real estate. Even though Andre does a variety of things in real estate, he technically does development and investments. So in that world, he everyone knows yes to real estate. So what world do you want them to know you best in? That's how we narrow down our audience. Honestly, I have to say, you know, I'm in the process of doing my first transaction. I'm really liking um, new construction for some reason. It's like a drawing to me because mm-hmm. um, I've actually been going out and going to like the different, um, I've been targeting a certain area and going to the different construction models, homes, and actually talking to people. So I would say new construction and investments. Okay. So you want to be the new construction, because Technically, the developer is an investor in new construction, right? So I want to work with developers and new home sales. So you have to tailor all of your marketing around that. I don't want to be known as the real estate agent. I want to be known as the new home sales specialist. Whichever catchy way you can put that, that's what I want to be known as. It is very hard to cast a net across Houston, right? Never less the world. But it's easier to cast a net in a certain area. So fishermen do not go out and say, you know what, whatever I put it comes in my net, that's what I want. We have shrimpers, we have crabbers, we have fishers, we have uh, people who just fish locally, we have people who do ocean fishing, it, deep sea fishing. So we have, we have to treat our business just the way other businesses happen, right? I cannot go to Academy and buy groceries. And Academy is not telling me that that's what they sell. They are letting me know that they are the outdoor store. That's how we have to do our real estate business. So if you want to concentrate in new home sales, then you need to be everything new home sales, but that actually ties into investments as well, because the people who bought the land, the developers, the builders, they're investors. So I would start there. I'm just wanting giving you guys a place to really, really start, because sometimes we want to be everything. And we can be a jack of all trades and a master of none. So if you stand for something, you're able to capture a crowd uh, faster. Not necessarily that you won't capture one. So I don't want to communicate that. But I do want to communicate that you will uh, capture a crowd faster. And once you come up with, now I want to be new home sales. Now I need to pick a color that goes with my personality or the area or the location that I'm trying to go with. Dark colors are dominant. Bright colors are friendly. Just you got to narrow it down so precise to um, help people see you when they see your brand. If I can, if that makes sense. that's that's if I can share something, Miss Janelle. Yeah, go ahead. That's, that's right on the dot. Another great thing is that Nike story, right? At one point in time, in basketball, Converse and Puma was the shoe of choice years mm-hmm. ago, right? And what was so great about Nike is they stayed consistent with their message. They were 
in front of people all the time. And then Nike got that one big break. We're all going to have the opportunity to get that break. In real estate, that break could be that one client who knows everybody, that one investor who, who's the connector that will put you on the map. And that's what happened with Nike. They got that one break. They signed a great player. You might know him, Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. right? And then from there, they began to blow up because of that one person, because of that connector. So in real estate, if you're consistent with the message, that when people see you post, they know they're going to see your brand recognition and they know they're going to get something from you. And then you, when you get that break, now it's not just going to happen. The break is going to happen because you're out in the street, you're networking, you're talking to people. But when you get that one client, the connector who's going to put you in the game, then your brand, your life will never be the same. That's a very good point, Andre. I thank you for bringing that up. So a lot of us in real estate, especially new agents, um, believe that we are going to get a return from every action. And it's actually the formula is a compound of every uh, compound of a lot of actions done on a consistent basis, which equals result. That's really what we're looking for. So like he said, Nike continued to put their brand out there when they were not the tennis shoe of choice, but they needed that one good break. And now they are compounding on their consistency and their efforts. That's where their result is coming from. You would believe you wouldn't believe how much money they make off of the same shoe of Michael Jordan. They, they have not come out with a new shoe. They're coming out with the same shoe different color, different time, and still making that same money off of that one product. So if you say, I want to be a new home salesman, you can multiply that and continue to do that because that's a great place to start. Why? We have a $500,000 housing shortage in the nation. There, there's not enough construction. We can do construction every single day. We could put out 100 homes every single day for the next 20 years, and we still would not be able to uh, fulfill the shortage that we have in housing. So that tells you you can be the Nike of real estate because you can be that next name that the builders go to. You can be the next real estate agent that helps them understand the economics and where to put their next project at. So it's really, really good for us to understand the Nike story because you're not going to be owned until someone attaches your name to your brand. Somebody's going to call your name. You're going to meet the right person at the right time doing the right thing. And then you're going to blow up. But unless you're doing it on a consistent basis at a high power, that one thing may take a really, really long time. We don't, if you understand the dynamics, Nike was giving away shoes. They were going, they decided that they were going to go to the teams. And you also understand, I have to understand Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan's story. Michael Jordan didn't even play basketball in high school. So he was not the sought out choice. He didn't come out of high school like LeBron with the skill. But he began to turn the basketball world around. And because he knew he was the underdog, he was willing to entertain Nike's conversation. So without being out there consistently, not going to the colleges first, not talking to uh, people who were not performing at the highest, that Nike continued to put out product. And as soon as Michael Jordan became hot, guess what? They rode the coattail. And now they're the number one brand. So with saying all that, how do you tie in your efforts and your locations to your brand? Uh, before you guys answer that question, I want to introduce Jessica. So you, some of you guys know I also uh, coach in the faith-based real, faith-based real estate coaching um, group in Facebook. And it's real important to me because um, just like Andre was saying that he gives back um, to people in the um community because they he's done business there and he just wants to help people. That's what I do in the face baked real estate coaching community. I really want to give back and to um, help people from across the world. And the only way that I'm able to meet those platforms is to use apps like Clubhouse, 
and Facebook to be able to do that. So I want to thank Jessica for giving me that opportunity. And more importantly, we're helping people to know who um, God is, how he helps our business, but more importantly, how to do our business in different niches. So there's going to be a real her uh, summit today. I think it starts today, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll let Jessica talk and she'll introduce herself and then tell you a little bit about the, uh, the summit. Thank you so much, Janelle. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, again, I'm Jessica Sadu. I'm the founder of the Faith-Based Real Estate Coaching Group on Facebook. And I just want to say that Janelle is a gem. Like there's so many, so many ways I've been impacted uh, indirectly and directly, even by being here with you guys today. And it was so important for me to have her with us because I know that she has the heart to serve, the heart to give. She's pouring it out and she really wants to make that impact with others and just really just show how important it is to really achieve your goals and your dreams and and gosh, so much more. Um, so I just want to make sure to just say that you guys are so blessed to have her. I'm so blessed to have her. Um, we have the Realtor Summit. It actually started yesterday, but it is five days straight. So it is going on today. Um, if you guys go to realtorsummit.com or you can go on Facebook and type in Realtor. It's R-E-A-L-T-H-E-R -E -E um, Summit or Realtor Society. Both of those will help you uh, locate it and you can get in there and get your ticket or you can also find me on Facebook and you'll see it. I believe Janelle, you have it on your page too because um, I'm always following her too because I'm trying to get encouraged to do this workout. She's doing those planks and I'm like, Lord, bless me. <laughs> help me get to that place. <laughs> um, so um, that's pretty much it um, to just help you guys locate it. It's really just uh, a five day event that's going to help everybody really support one another in their business. We have all kinds of presentations. There's 30 speakers um, that are going to uh, be speaking all about different areas uh, in real estate. And it's funny because one of the niches that is being talked about this week is divorce. Um, so definitely if you guys have that time, chime in. You can also get what we call the all access pass. And that's going to allow you to have lifetime access to all of the presentations. So that way, if you don't have the opportunity to watch them while they're live, um, you can still, you know, play them later. Plus, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on outside of that. But that's it. That's that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle, for having me here. I'm so happy to be with you this morning. I'm sorry. I'm always talking with them. You don't. Thank you, Jessica, for joining. Now, today, you're going to have a speaker on branding on this very topic right um yeah there is actually a speaker that's going to be talking about niches because it's so important to niche down and have like what you were just talking about like having that one place that people can say they know you for that one thing that they know you for really because if if you want to have that lasting impression and you want your business to live on for a hundred years even you want to have a specific group of people that you specialize in and yeah they're, they're going to be talking about that this week there's actually a schedule once you guys go to the website so you can see when those are going to be played okay great um and for the first some of us um i'm one of those people who have been divorced before uh, we're going to have uh, i have a good friend uh, she's my classmate and we've been friends for years and uh, she's a life coach and a marriage coach. Her and her husband have a dynamic, awesome uh, relationship. And just like some of you, uh, I kind of helped her and coached her and get out of working. She was a student counselor and I actually used to go up to the school and she worked in an alternative school. So I would go up to the school and talk to the kids all the time. And she kind of got burned out and she realized where her gift was. So she went into the entrepreneur world and she is a, they're, now they're couple coaches and they do a lot of couple events, but tomorrow she's going to log on and help us to um, kind of learn how to have the conversations with our spouses, create bunkers. If you don't know what I mean, um, this business that we do takes a lot of, of us. And sometimes we don't communicate it well to our spouses and our family and our significant others, even our children, of how we can use, how they can help us with our business. But more importantly, understand when we're not talking, what we're talking about. When we're at work long hours and we're concentrating so hard on trying to build this business that we forget and neglect our families at home, 
we're going to have better conversations with that. So she's going to be on with us tomorrow. And then you can go and listen to um, the other people talking at the summit. They would be really helpful for us because we have to have healthy relationships at home in order to build a brand, right? Your brand is who you are. It is what you're passionate about doing, what uh, voice do you want people to hear and what message you want people to receive. So when we're thinking about our branding, um, sometimes we have to start at home. Are you a good parent, right? Are you a good communicator? Are you a good wife? Uh, I use children in my business a lot because I love children. So I'm real big about going to the schools, talking to moms, talking to the teachers. But in, to be 100% honest, I was that room mom, mom realtor. That was me. Um, I went to every field trip, but it was more importantly, not just for my brand, but it was important for me to do it because I, I communicate well better with children than I do with adults. So I would always use that in my business. Every time I went to the school, of course, I had a real estate shirt on. I was the Booster Club president. I was the Booster Club secretary. I was the room mom for every class. But it helped me to not only just help children, but be known as the realtor room mom. Too. So I really want you guys to incorporate what you're good at. Who do you speak to well into your business? So who else is branding their company? Oh, first, Sharori, did I help you? Yes, ma'am, we did. I took my notes. Okay, thank great you. Deal. All right, so some of us are in branding transitions. We're trying to um, communicate it better or get it to somewhere else. We've branded for a reason, and I think sometimes we feel like that reason has played out. Some of us are rebranding ourselves. Who to speak from the re the rebranding um, perspective? I'm rebranding. Very good. So let me first. I want to tell you guys, Charlie's a firecracker, right? So we were working on his rebranding yesterday. I probably gave him a few tips. We sat there for maybe thirty-five minutes to an hour, working on a few tips. So in four hours, I want to say, and I probably am exaggerating. It was probably two or three. In four hours, he had rebranded himself, got a new logo, got his DBA, got his paperwork, his LLC. He was on it. So this is the uh, tenacity that we have to have because when we have an idea, we have to act on it. I think we spend way too much time trying to figure out if this idea is a good idea. And the only way to do that is to go for it. So he had an image in his mind that he wanted to portray. That's where we started. What do you want people to see you at? So talk about it, uh, Charlie. How did we come up with that? Oh, so far as like Brandon, Brandon, I was thinking about my photo shoot and all that and what I wanted to look, I wanted, I wanted like a, like a Kanye commercial feel, uh, higher end, you know, very luxurious. So, uh, once, you know, we had that thought, we, once we had that vision, then Janelle gave me some ideas. We Googled some synonyms and then I came up with the, the name right there. So um, let's stay right there for a second, Charlie. A lot of us are trying to figure out right now, what is my new name? And this is how I always figure out names. So I asked him, what are you trying to look for? What is your end goal? Now I want you to Google the synonym for it and pick a name for your business based on the synonym. So he said, I want luxurious. I want that dude, right? Like I want the Kanye feel. I want the smoker's coat. I want to have million dollar men conversations. I really want to be, I mean, I want to be that dude. So I told him to Google luxury men. What did I say, dude? We Google Rich uh, men. Rich men. Oh, yeah. Rich, rich men. men words. Yeah. <laughs> rich men words, right? Some of those synonyms were like, oh, man, dang, that is not good. How people believe about, you know, words that are related to rich men. But that's the audience that he wanted to talk to. That's who he wants to capture. He has a luxury client that he's working with right now. So we Googled, you know, what do they do so that we can send them a gift in what, uh, how they communicate, right? So with that, he was able to immediately find the name of his company. Great name. We Googled it, made sure the domain wasn't taken, made sure the uh, LLC wasn't taken. We went to the Secretary of State. He went and got the DBA in minutes. And then 
he began to build a brand. Now, how, how did you find your logo so fast, uh, Charlie? So y'all might want to write this down. It's a website called freelancer.com. So the good thing about freelancer.com, it's kind of like, so, so think about if you go to Fiverr and try to get one person to make your logo, on freelancer, you can create a contest. And then with that contest, think about having from one person on Fiverr to maybe 100 to 200 people on Fiverr uh, submitting different uh, logos for you, and you pick which one you want. So, you know, once I posted it in about 10 minutes, I had about 20 or 30 logos people were sending me. So I did it yesterday, Charlie. Um, I was trying to find, what was I? I was trying to name what my Facebook group. So I went on, created a contest, paid thirty dollars. Well, I didn't have to pay thirty dollars until the winner. So I picked the winner. So that's a good thing for you to know. When you go into freelancers.com and you run this contest, if they don't produce a product that you like, you don't have to do it, go with it. But once you pick a winner, then you pay them. And so literally, probably twenty minutes. It says it's going to take three days. I think it says Shannon for us to get. Um, an answer, but literally in like 20 minutes, we had eight people give us Facebook group names. So it's, and then you just pay them $30. So from, it's the flip side of Fiverr because you get to pick which one you like versus, and you have people working for you versus you picking a person first and then get disappointed and end up spending a hundred dollars to get a $50 logo. So it's a good website. So after he did that, he immediately went to his, uh, to Facebook, he created a group, he created Instagram, he did all of those things. Now, what do you want different from the brand you already have to the brand that you just went to? Uh, first of all, I didn't really even have much of a actual brand at the time, but the little brand that I did have was, it gave, okay, I do real estate when I get a chance. Uh, I help people buy houses here and there. People forget that I even, you know, about what I even do. So now I'm creating a brand where I'm not only creating a brand, but also I'm gonna have, it's gonna be an experience when you work with me. So I'm gonna definitely even stay on people's brain with that. That's good. And that's a, that's a very good statement to say. So right now, how many of you guys message that you're giving as a realtor says, I sell real estate when I want to. I'm a real estate agent, just like the other 50,000 people in Houston or around the world, uh, millions of people around the world. Um, I dib and dab in a little bit of this, but I really don't have a lane. How many of you, how many of you guys are willing to admit that your brand is, it made itself. Basically, I, I'm in real estate, but people really don't know. How many of you guys are right there today? Can, can, can I add something else, Janelle? <clears throat> that Charlie might want to do is take it to the next level and, and get your trademark and start mm -hmm. protecting your brand. Because as you grow and go to the next level, people will try to feed off of that brand. So right now, while you invest in it, Go ahead and take care of that trademark, that patent, so no one else can use your logo, your brand, your image, and then you really say. I'm glad you brought that up, Andre. That was my next step. Thank you. Because that is so true. We guys, you don't realize that. Like I was saying, I went and got the name of my Facebook group. For a little, uh, a little, for as little as $1,300, you can trademark your name, your hashtag, your group name, your logo, your uh, um, slang, I mean, your um, your tagline, everything about you, you can actually trademark it because people are believing in rip off and duplicate, especially with the internet where I'll be as fluent as it possibly is, people are taking things from other people and if you if it's not trademark you really can right why not if there's a real estate agent in california having the same brand as you and you're in texas is that an issue is that an issue um andre <clears throat> so i would say i would say yes me personally if you're trying to grow to a whole nother level 
And who to say you're not going to try to get a license in California? Right? You want to take your brand everywhere. And you, you, you're the only one who want to be, you're the only person who want to use that brand. Brand recognition, for sure. So some people and, believe that. Go ahead, Andre. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. And do not think like, well, I'm small. Nobody knows me. I don't need it yet. And that's what happened to me. I didn't even think about it until I had a talk with a trademark attorney. And as we had our conversation, she's like, I'm going to be honest with you, Andre. It's going to be, I'd be surprised if no one else is using it. Yes, the real estate. And the way you have it, the way you have it shaped, everything. And she looked it up, looked up everything, and she said, wow, no one is using it. No one has trademarked it. I said, I want to trademark it all. Everything, everything that I can trademark, let's do it now, right? Because I now know where we're heading, and we are heading all over the state, and I want to make sure we protect it. So if you don't mind sharing, what's the budget for something like that? So like you said, I ended up paying thirteen to 1500 mm -hmm. for that, and then I did an extensive shirt, uh, search on protecting not only the trademark, but the brand itself, the way we have it uh, outlined, the colors, uh, the, uh, the, the Yes to Real Estate team, the Yes to Real Estate, anything that I use, I paid extra to take it to another level and, and to get everything that we normally known for. So it was so, uh, about 2000 for everything. So is that going to do that nationwide for you? Is it going to do it statewide for you? What does that look like? It, it's, it's nationwide. Not only just statewide, but nationwide too. Very good. So since you're here with me, let's role play this a little bit. So I am now copyrighted. I know that I have uh, my name is protected. No one else can use it. Now I can, you know, tap my little shoulders and uh, pump myself up. So with that being said, when you go out into the community, how do you communicate your brand? So I'm going to be the consumer. You just met me in your niched area where you are working and you've never seen my face. So let me tell you one thing before we start about niching. I don't know my area so well because I have been there. Everybody should know me. And if they don't know me, I need to introduce myself. I know the community leaders. I know the, the laws, I know the city um, inspection people, I know the local cable guy, I know the guy who works for Centerport, the people who work for the water department. This is my area, so everyone should know me. So you have happened to see me. How do you introduce yourself to me and portray your brand to me? I'm going to be the consumer, okay? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Hello. Hi, how are you, Diane? Pleasure to I'm, see you today. I'm good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. My name is Andre. I'm pretty sure you see me in the neighborhood knocking out doors and passing out flyers for our Easter egg hunt. Have you had a chance to uh to know the supply or what we're doing? Oh no, I'm just over here visiting my mom. <clears throat> uh, you're having an Easter egg hunt? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh it was uh coming up this Saturday. Uh, you know, you have kids? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. How old are they? Um, I have a 10 year old and a 13 year old. Oh, that's perfect. So bring the kids for them to come out and Easter egg hunt, enjoy the music, bounce house, planes painting. But also, you get a chance to see what's going on in the community. It sounds like you grew up here, also. Is that correct? I did. I just I visit my parents usually on holiday, and I'm here for Easter uh, to have Easter with my parents. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. See, I grew up here also in Fairport along with my mom. So, I'm pretty sure your mom probably. No, my mom, we stay right around the corner from you at that house right there. Just look across the street. You see it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we grew up there, so we probably know each other. It's just been a while since you've seen each other. Oh, man, that's cool. <clears throat> yeah. So I just want to invite you and tell you what we're doing in the community. Uh, as you can see, if you look behind you, we're building townhomes there. We're building four there. And the place that we have in the Easter egg hunt, we build another nine town townhomes. So I grew up in the community and I'm coming back to the community to add value. Would you say that's important? 
Yes, yes, indeed. We don't have enough people coming back to the community. Everybody seems to be moving out. Yes, yes. But here's the statistic. Everything is definitely changing now. Have you heard of what's going on in that East River project? Uh, no, tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so this uh, big time developer is bringing what is normally off of IT and Memorial, the city center. He's bringing it to Fifth Ward. And everything that's in his path is going to be affected in a good way, right? Um, and the community, the schools, everyone is going to get an opportunity to eat and grow from it. And so with me being from the community, I wanted to come back and add value by building townhomes and just uh, represent the community and let people know what we're doing. So a lot of the great changes are happening. And um, I would love to share with you more your scheduled appointment with uh, Ms. Diamond, the transaction coordinator, and we can go one-on-one -on -one and talk a little bit more about it. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a plan because um, <clears throat> my parents are kind of getting older, and I don't know if we should <clears throat> move back to the community or sell the home or <clears throat> what we should do. So that sounds great. Well, hold on. Hold what you got. So if you decide to sell, <laughs> if you decide to sell, there's several options, okay? Number one, you can always use a realtor, which I am and get top dollar for your property or for your grandma's property, right? And I recommend that would be the best route to go is because you're going to make the most money. But if for some reason you guys trying to do a quick sale, cash sale, and just get out, I definitely can help you with that also. So pretty much just based on your preference and what you want. But most of all, come out Saturday, come enjoy the fun, and then if we decide to do business together, you know, I'm definitely here in the community to help. Okay, no problem. So it sounds like you're the man with the plan. So we'll be talking later and I'll bring the kids out Saturday. Yeah. If you don't know who I am now, you definitely will. I'll see you Saturday. Great. Good job, Andre. What I, I love the fact that you know everything around you and what's going and what's coming because that's what people want to know. We live as a society as based in the fear of the unknown. We do not know. We hear news, we watch Facebook, we look on the internet, we listen to our friends. And so yesterday it was communicated that the average sale price in Houston is $400,000, right? So people in Fifth Ward, in communities who've never had a thought to live in a $400,000 <clears throat> excuse me, in a $400,000 house would be scared. They're living in a fear of unknown. So it's very important to know the communities that we're going to be going in and marketing in because we have to lower their guard. But I know you as Andre. The only thing that I would critique about your conversation with me is you gave me your name, right? And you have a common name. So you say, my name is Andre and I'm a real estate agent. So if I didn't remember your last name, I didn't really pay attention to your phone number. When I got ready to... Google, I need, I'm looking for Andre in Fifth Ward. What would I find? Uh, you, you would definitely find me with the, connected with the new construction and the flips that we're doing over there. Would I find Yes to Real Estate? Oh, yeah, most definitely. That's what you should have communicated to me. You yeah. should have got me to say yes. That's the brain stain that I'm talking about. I will probably remember Andre. I'm going to remember I met you in Fifth Ward. But if I happen to Google and just put a real estate agent in Houston named Andre, I'm going to get way too many people. But if you would have got me to say yes and smile like you always do, that's what gets people to go around saying yes. That's your brain. You have to communicate it at all times. I'm, I'm smiling right now, everybody. <laughs> I know you are. Right. So I want you to add guys, especially the new ones in real estate or people who've never really thought about getting myself out here in branding. This is something you need to re ask yourself. How easy is it to get into business with me? Business is based on clicks, right? The less clicks, the better. So if I go online and I'm looking for you and I cannot find you nine times out of 10, I will not do business with you. That's another thing that branding is going to do for you. So you need to ask yourself, how easy is it to get into business with me? And don't Google yourself from your phone. Go to your uh, friend's phone or your coworker's phone or people in the office and say, hey, let me Google myself. 
because you will find how low down on the totem pole you are. Branding has way more to do with having my name and my face out there. I need people to be seeing it as well. So it's being top of mind and top of the internet at all times because people are, micro this is a microwave society. They're not going to go too far to find you. If I'm looking for Andre, right, and I see 20, the first one answer the phone, the one at the top that's going to get my, my uh, business. But if I'm looking for a yes to real estate because I thought it was so cute and so funny and that the fact that you believe in you and you had it on, everything in the neighborhood that day said yes, that's what I'm going to Google versus Andre. Now, if I Google yes to real estate, how likely is it for me to find you at the top? Oh, I'm at, uh, you would find me definitely at the top. That's right. So that's, that's, yeah. the, that's where we need to go, right? Uh, so we have our branding specialist, Tara, on the phone. Did I say it right? Is it Tara or Tara? It's Tara. Hello. Hi. So uh, we kind of got started, but I wanted to get, give you a chance to introduce yourself, kind of give them, uh, tell me if I'm right or wrong on some of our branding tips and kind of just let them know what you do and when they can see you speak at the conference and how to get in touch with you. Amazing. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me. I'm so excited to be here and meet all of you guys. So my name is Tara Kroc, and I am the founder of the Realtor Society, which is an online community marketing and education platform specifically for modern women in real estate. We talk about all things digital marketing. I tend to get really excited about lead generation, which I know is a struggle for a lot of real estate agents. And this this week, we actually have our Realtor Summit, which is a free online summit where we have 30 amazing speakers and over 35 presentations. And we're talking all about mindset for your business. We're talking about marketing. We're talking about social media. We're talking about business things, as well as different niches within your business. So tell me, from the branding perspective, what would be the first thing I do if I don't even have a clue where to start in branding? So the first thing that I always like to encourage people to do when they're not sure about where to get started is to create an avatar. And when I say avatar, I always think of those video games. And I don't know how many of you guys are into video games or have significant others that are into video games. But you know how you can build your ideal character. You can create what they look like. You can create what they're wearing. You can create anything that you want as far as their appearance. So I like to sit down and really identify who is it that I want to speak to. So for example, if I knew that I wanted to work in um, where I live currently, I am in a vacation uh, touristy type of area. So if I want to um, work with people that are looking for second homes. I know that there is a certain type of client that I'm looking for. So I'm going to really write out what are, what are their goals? What are their dreams? Where do they shop? What do they like? Where are they eating? All of that fun stuff. And once I sit down and look at that, I'm like, okay, so this is the type of person I want to I want to work with. Now, let me look at myself and how can I align myself with that so that I'm putting out the presence that I want to put out with my brand. I'm sorry, I'm talking with the mute up. I'm sorry. So kind of like if you look at my picture, that's my avatar, right? That's who I want to want you to imagine because I don't look like that every day, but I look firecracker in that avatar, right? So I pick the people that I want to speak with, but I don't speak well to others. I'm an introvert. I really don't know where to start because it's just me and my kids and my family and I really don't go nowhere and I really don't do anything. What do we say to that person? So the first thing that I say is I am also an introvert. I am a complete introvert. I prefer to stay at home in my pajamas. However, that is not my ideal client. So what I say is that whereas you can... I always like to say, first of all, you want to be authentic to who you are. And 
while I work with people that are in a luxury market that are looking for their second homes, I also am very approachable and I'm very honest about who I am and what it is I bring to the table. So I may like to be at home, but I also know exactly what's going on within my community. And I communicate that through the information that I'm providing through my website, through my Instagram and other socials. So they know that when they're coming to me, they're getting information on the community. They're like, she is someone that knows what's going on. I'm not out there rubbing elbows with everybody and staying up late at night and and all the hot spots. That's not my thing. However, I am someone that is very community focused. I love supporting small businesses. I can tell you the best restaurants to eat at. And that is really what a lot of people are looking for. They're really just looking for just the one thing that somebody can connect with. I always encourage people to sit down and I call them pillars. I really think it's important to have different pillars in your business where you can create kind of your, it helps you create your content for your social media and whatnot as well. But people that look at me, they know, okay, she likes focusing on small businesses. She is someone that is very community focused, that kind of thing. So Sit down, figure out what your pillars are in your business. Are you a family person? Is that really important to you? Um, are you someone that likes golf? Is golfing really important to you? Once you figure out those pillars, you're going to very quickly realize who your ideal audience is because bottom line is a lot of times your ideal audience is someone that looks very similar to you. So I, I'm listening to you and I'm like, man, this sounds hard. So... Um, with all the information you give me, I, I, I've said this to them time and time again, right? This is something that I coach. But I'm also the person who says that you, if you don't have the skill, you need to hire the skill. So if someone says, that sounds all good, Tara, but I can't do it. How do they hire you? As far as what we offer within the Realtor Society, we really break everything down. So all you have to do to really get to know us and our programs is head over. It's R-E-A-L-T-H-E-R society.com. And you can see all of our different programs and we make everything super accessible for you. So we spend a lot of time really breaking things down into bite-sized pieces so that you're able to implement it within your business. So we have agents that are within their first three months that we're really helping. And then we have agents that have been in the business for 17 plus years. So no matter what journey you are in, with your business, we're able to help you with the different programs that we have. Awesome. So the next thing is, I know you said that this is the real her program. If you are a male, could they still hire you? A hundred percent. Absolutely. We really wanted to focus on um, I found, so my story is when I walked into the real estate training room as a new agent, I looked around and I was like, holy cow, when they handed me a script and I was like, okay, wait a minute, this doesn't necessarily feel authentic to who I am. How can I flip this and make this um, something that sounds like me? That's something that is authentically me. And what ended up happening was I found that I really align with more of the digital marketing strategies within real estate. And I found that it was a very male dominated space. And I really wanted to break that mold and show that women can also be in that space right along with men. And so while I prefer to work with women and really help uplift them within my community. We absolutely can help male agents as well. Well, I know this call is pretty he women heavily, but some my guys that's on here I like to take care of. So I wanted them to know that they can actually find help and get it started. And I'm glad that you said whether I'm on my journey in a, as an agent in three months, I just got my license. I really want to go the right direction quickly or I've done it myself couldn't figure it out. I've been in real estate five years and I still haven't been able to crack the code. I want you to know that cracking the digital code is all, is possible. It's almost impossible not to. Also, she said she had to script, right? So even when you went digitally, 
I want a lot of people to know that because a lot of agents will say, I'm not good at cold calls. I can't pick up the phone and I can't call people. Do you still use scripting in your business? You just use it digitally? Did you get away from that? Or did that was that your escape from having to make cold calls? A hundred percent. I actually, that's really interesting that you just asked that. I just saw yesterday, there was a conversation that was in one of the Facebook groups, you know, how you're kind of scrolling and you see something and somebody actually mentioned, you know, that any industry that you're in, you have scripts, you know, there's, if you are a doctor, you have a script that you are saying to a patient when they come in. You don't realize that's what it is, but that is essentially what you're doing. You have a very specific, particular way of talking to your client. And that's all really a script is. And I think that cold calling and door knocking and those type of things, they're a more aggressive way of lead generating or scripting, I guess you could say. But when you get online, it feels a lot more passive. And for me, I talk a lot about inbound versus outbound marketing. I get really, really excited about it. But outbound marketing is more of that pushing a message out into the world where you are talking about uh, the cold calling and the door knocking. Whereas inbound marketing is something where you're attracting people to you. And that feels a lot more safe if that's the right word, I guess. Yeah, safe. It feels a lot less aggressive and it feels a lot more aligned with my personality. And everybody's different. And I think as an introvert, having people come to me and me understanding like what it was that attracted them to me makes it easier for me to have that script and talk to them when they come to me. That's good because we, we happen to be in a scripting and role playing room. So usually on Mondays and Tuesdays, we script and role play a conversation. And I never like to leave the call without having them understand that scripting is part of who we are. Right. Mm -hmm. We are truly actors convincing people to do business with us. So whether you pick up the phone and directly say, hey, do you want to buy, sell and invest? Or you, you're talking to them through an avatar. You're talking to them through a bot. You're talking to them in the community. We still have to have a structure of our conversation because the ultimate goal is to get the appointment, right? It's to get in front of them and do business with them. And without a structured conversation, we will spend more time talking and less time doing business. So I want people to not fear from, because we have a hard, a hard time getting people to actually speak up. But if we can't speak up to each other, we will definitely won't be able to speak to the community. And eventually, even if I decide to sway over to the Internet world, I still have to have a conversation. A hundred percent. Yeah, I wanted people to know that scripting is a must, whether you do it, like she said, in a very strong manner and picking it up and making direct phone calls to someone. Um, making outbound calls or in ISA, which is inside sales, or you're doing it digitally, you're still going to have to know how to structure that conversation. It still needs to be internalized, memorized, and made your own in order for you to do business at a high level. So this is, this is eventually the road you will have to cross, whether you cross it today or you get frustrated with your business and you can't quite remove the lid and you learn it later. So it's better to learn it now. This is the platform for us to have these type of conversations so that when we do get to the point in our business where it's going and it's exploding, we can secure the appointments. Because without appointments, we can have a thousand leads. Everyone's looking for leads. I have real estate agents come in my office all the time. And the first question they ask is, do y'all get that leads? No, we teach you how to create business. Because I can give you a lead today or I can teach you to create leads for a lifetime. But you truly want the appointment because I can give you the lead, but can you convert it over to an appointment? That appointment turns into dollars. So that's what I want you guys who are really, really quiet and never really kind of want to script and role play. We really have to get to the point to perfect our conversations, whether we're doing it digitally or whether we're doing it in person aggressively. We definitely want to be able to communicate our brand. And at the end of the conversation, it should equal an appointment and they should know who I am. Does that make sense to everybody? So I want- Absolutely. 
Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So you guys have it. any questions for uh, Jessica, Tara, anyone on the line who's already working in their branding before we disconnect? This is where we learn, guys. The questions that you have in your head are questions that everyone has in their head. That's why I create no judgment zones. No one on here is going to judge you. We're just trying to grow and to be better. We have 61 people on this line and we have 60,000 real estate agents uh, probably within a 20 mile radius of you. So that means that a lot of people are not taking their business serious and putting it in their hands. So this is the opportunity to get the step ahead that you need. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. If if no questions, I would like to ask something if no one has questions. I had, I had a question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Audrey. Uh, but um, when, when you're, uh, for uh, the young ladies are talking this now, um, when you're um, branding yourself, is it just online that you're doing the branding, or do you do collateral and things like that outside of the online world? Do you have shirts or do you have hats or, you know, what what other tools do you use to brand yourself or the journey do you just uh propose that we do this all online tara did you understand her question sorry i missed i heard a hat and was she asking what other branding collateral do i recommend having yes ma'am yes ma'am are you just doing this all online or do you brand and use other collateral offline so I think she's speaking uh -huh. to you specifically. Do you refer it out or do you tell them what they need to do or is there something that you do? So I actually teach agents how to brand themselves and how to market themselves online. And I recommend that anything you can brand, brand. I am. I feel like the problem with a lot of agents is they tend to be secret agents and they're worried about coming across salesy or pushing too hard. And I'm all about if you have t-shirts, if you have a cute cup, if you have a hat, if you have a tote bag, rock it and do whatever you need to do to get your name out there. You never know who's looking, who's watching. Put a little sticker on your laptop and sit at a co coffee shop and say, hey, if you're you know, if you want to talk real estate, sit down, let me buy you a cup, you know, so I always recommend any way that you can is not, you know, you can brand or market yourself is not a bad way as long as it feels good to you and aligns with who you are. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I also have a question, but I have a quick minute. Um, for me, I am rebranding from being an agent um, of one team to now a team. How do you merge or introduce the world besides the obvious doing a photo shoot and merging your logo from your first logo to now your rebranding re logo? Did you, should I drop one or should I keep both? Uh, what's your suggestion? Are you changing your so you you're a current solo agent you're turning into a team or is it going to be your name team or is it a completely different name how is it completely that different you are name. completely different name so i basically like to do what i would do in your situation is i would make it an event so i would do something along the lines of do a I don't know, a two week countdown say something exciting is coming soon. Um, and I would kind of have a little countdown happening on your socials. And then I would even have just a little, um, I don't even know, like appetizers and drinks at a local restaurant or something, invite some of your past clients and invite your team, obviously have a photographer there and just make it super fun. And then I would use that content that you create to really make a splash in changing that up. So because it's something to celebrate and you should absolutely make it as exciting as possible and celebrate your I mean, because that's a big deal going from solo to a team. So I would highly recommend finding a way to make it fun, make it authentic to you, of course, but um, give yourself content by 
you know, creating a little event and making it a little celebration. Oh, dope. Thank you so much. That's a little bit of what Janelle has told me too. So thank you both. Hi, you guys. This is Anna Snyder. I have a question. I think they got rid of the hand raising thing. I can't figure out how to use Clubhouse anymore. I just want to say good morning um, to you fellow Houstonians. I'm a Houston native as well, but I'm currently based out of Washington. And I just got my real estate license in December, and I'm also active duty Navy. So I'm trying to figure out um, how to brand myself as well. I got an LLC as well, and I was listening to the Andre where he was saying, like, kind of putting himself in the community and kind of scripting himself into the community. And I've been doing the same thing, but it seems like, I'm doing a lot at once, and I'm just trying to figure out how to merge everything together because I also wholesale, and I'm an agent, and I'm, I work full-time as a Navy logistics specialist. So if you guys have any pointers on that, um, just kind of finding where I fit in in this world <laughs> that I'm in. Tara, would you like to take it, or you want me to help her? Um, why go ahead and take it Janelle. <laughs> okay. So what I would suggest is it seems like you do a lot, right? Um, you're, you're good at a lot. You're informed in a lot of areas. Which one do you like the most? Um, I like being a real estate agent and wholesale, but obviously I'm in a contract, so I have no choice, but to be in the military. What do you communicate? Um, the most. What what can you communicate well the most? Um, real estate. Well, I can do my needs. When I mean real estate, what area in real estate do you communicate the most, right? So if I was to give you, if I came up to you today and said, hey, you know what? I, uh, I'm i in the service just like you. I saw you at a, a event for um, people who have served for veterans. Could you communicate that to me very well to show me the ins and outs, the benefits, the uh, opportunities and the strengths that you have through conversation about the veteran community. Yes. What do you communicate well in? Um, I can communicate how I got started in real estate and how they can as well, utilizing their benefits as far as the VA loan and just kind of turning my primary residence into rental. Okay, so that's, the, that's your niche right there. If you can communicate that well, you've done it yourself, so you have a testimony and you are in the space where you can attract enough people to meet your goal. I'm real big on starting at the end and working myself backwards. So if I wanna service 35 families and I'm in a community where I know 3,500 people, that's the, and I know it in and out, I've experienced it, I've done it, that's what I'm gonna be. So I'm gonna be your VA specialist. Your credentials is gonna say, I was in a service at one point, I understand VA, I've lived in a home, I've turned it into a rental. And if you wanna be just like me, who do I help, what do I do, and how can I get you there? Then that's what I would brand. I would not brand real estate as a whole because real estate is a brand within itself, right? So all of us do real estate. What makes you different than me? That's what you wanna communicate. Understand all, that's, that's, that's perfect. I mean, I've been trying to figure out how that, will work out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So um, I want to pre thank everyone. Um, I'm, I'm like four minutes over and I'm not rushing. If you guys need some help and the people who have the questions, answers, uh, we do have the time, but I do want to make a good use of your time and ours. So I wanted to let you know that this is what we do on this app Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 830 to 530. Our job, my job is to coach you guys to success. I am truly passionate about impact, impacting communities, and I'm so excited. Uh, you guys don't understand how exciting it is for me to reach people worldwide. Um, that was a prayer that I had at the beginning of the year that I wanted to be on higher platforms and be able to uh, impact the lives of real estate agents across the world because I want to see you guys grow. It truly fuels me for you guys to grow, and I can help you reach your next step. So we use this platform to do it. Also, I have a coaching program where I can do one-on-ones, a group session, whatever you guys need. You can find more information about it at pbcaacademy.com. 
If you are in Houston and would like to stop by our office, we have an excellent training um, program. We have a class, a boot camp class to build your business every Thursday from 12 to 2. We always bring other people in. So that's why Jessica and Tara is here to be able to bring value to you guys. So we have a lunch and learn at 11 o'clock. But every Tuesday and Wednesday, we are scripting and role playing on this app. So if you have a conversation that you want to master, it's something that you need help with, please join us every Tuesday and Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we had a boss up conversation. We're trying to boss our business up, make more money, but also uh, feel comfortable enough to communicate with people who have the same problems as we do. So we usually talk about things that can make us better, enhance our business and get going. And I really, really appreciate everyone who logged on today. I saw that Daryl is on here from um, Cleveland, Ohio. So it's super impressive to meet and impact people's lives all across the world. So uh, if you ever need any help, go ahead, Andre. Well, one more thing real quick, everyone. If you guys are looking to join a great brokerage to learn and grow and you're a beginner agent or an experienced agent, I can attest that before I came to this brokerage, uh, Anna, I was just like you. I, I didn't have a clue of which direction I wanted to go. And CR Elite with the leadership of Rayvon and Janelle took our business from $4 million to $13.6 million in one year. So if you're an agent and you're looking for a great broker to learn, to edify, and to grow, look at the message below with Miss Shannon. She'll put the information. Come grow with us. See you at the top. Does anyone, thank you, Andre. I really appreciate it. Does anyone else have any questions, concerns, uh, need some help outside this app? Now, I do want to respect our guests. So they have put their information of how to be reached in the chat. Please look at it. If you have some questions, I'm sure they charge consultation fees, but give them that because if, what, what you're going to do is you're going to get steps ahead in your business and the other people in this community faster. It is very important to elect people in our business with the skill sets that we do not possess. So hiring people to do what we don't do well will get us a faster to our goal. Trying to figure it out and do it yourself, you're still going to spend the same amount of money, but the time is what's most important. So give these people, um, go to their websites, do a consultation with them. Um, that, that information that Tara just gave Kamisha helped her understand where she needed to go. Let me tell you guys, uh, skills is priceless. So if someone has a skill set, it will definitely enhance your business. So reach out. Let's do business together. Let's grow together. Let's win together. And most importantly, let's get our brands out there, who we are. I should be able to look at all of you guys' social media in probably the next two months and know that, damn, this is what they stand for. And I love it. So if we don't have any other questions, concerns. I have a question. Okay. Um, so you, everybody knows that I speak Spanish and I've wanted to rebrand myself, but rebranding in a bilingual sense has been kind of difficult. Um, so I don't know if any of y'all have any experience, uh, Spanish to English branding. Tamara will probably have to take that one because I don't have any experience in going from there to that. That's not my, um, niche. If she's still on, if she could touch it or at least give you the information where you can have a private conversation with her, I appreciate it. Yeah. So as far as you, you're saying that you're currently brand, your brand is currently in English and you want it to be bilingual. Is that, am I understanding that? Yes. Correctly? So I speak English and Spanish and then my name is not like a typical Mexican name or a typical American name. It's Maze Joseph. So I get confused as a man all the time. So I need to find a balance <laughs> in either a logo, a saying where it can translate to both English and Spanish, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So I would, I think this is part of a much larger conversation. And so I would definitely love to talk to you about it. Is there a way that you can reach out to me and we can chat about it and I'll be able to kind of help guide you in the right direction on how you can um, kind of make that switch or, or get that clarified for you? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. I'd love to help you with that. So awesome. This is how we work network. This is, um,
turn into a networking event, but this is great because we need to elect people to help us do what we do. And we go out every day going to networking events, telling people that we're real estate agents, but we have to incorporate and network and build our vendor business as well. So I hope this was helpful for you guys today. I really hope someone at least took a nugget away and will be a better real estate agent because of it. So if you have anything else, let me know. If not, I will see each and every one of you guys tomorrow at 8.30 short. All right, guys, have a great and awesome and productive day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, team. Thank you.